ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I got to do some adjustment of the volume, brought it down too far. Luther Vandross is going to be talking about any love, and we're going to bring him back to the beginning because it ain't no sense of playing Luther in the middle. You know, Luther don't work that way. So Luther got to be played from the beginning. Hold on now. There we go. Any love, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to turn it up too loud, but this is this mouse and me, we ain't familiar with each other. Because I think to myself sometimes. Come on, Luther. In a lot of ways. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a little bit of Luther playing in our background like we did earlier today. And you know what? We're going to be all right. And we're going to make some adjustments to the volume over the next couple of days or so so I can get adjusted to using Media Monkey. I've used it before, but I haven't used it in this way before. So, hey, that's the way it's going to be. Hey, I didn't ask you to pop back up. Media transfer process. Okay, fine. I didn't ask you. Didn't ask you for that either. Those two are shut down. Sorry, it's saying you can't get into these folders right here because I got to reconnect them. I ain't worried about that. You know, get on up there. No, go. You too. Go up. All right. I ain't worried about these two right now. Remember, this is five terabytes. This is four terabytes. That's eight terabytes plus seven terabytes. Well, this is actually an eight terabyte hard drive. So that's 16 plus another two terabytes, which is 18 plus another four terabytes. And that's, there you have it, y'all. 22 terabytes worth of information just on this computer. All right. Because, like I said, I multitask. It's the workhorse. And I got it for that reason. Now, in the video I said before that it was 32 <laughs> gigabytes. <laughs> I know I said megabytes. 32 megabytes of uh, so-called RAM. It's 32 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, I, I could have gone higher. But I didn't need to go that high because I'm not doing this for gaming. But it's comparable, can handle gaming. Just like it can handle me streaming. This right here is a streaming video in the background, believe it or not. This streams from the internet. So that was the other thing that was slowing us down, but I got to have my movement in the background. All right. Hey, what up, homie? All right, ladies and gentlemen. We got some talking that we have to do. We're going to try to explain certain things to some of you because we know that some of you still don't get it. Look, I realize that I talk about things on this channel that you're not hearing on any other channel. You're not hearing anywhere on the Internet. The stuff I talk about is what individuals pay people to be a part of groups to get the information, and then they're still not getting everything they're getting here. And then people are taking the information I put out on my channel, and they're combining it with the information they're sharing with people. I don't mind that. I told people, you can take what's mine and make it yours. However, hold on now, you don't get to take our documents and use them without changing them, without completely augmenting them. You can take bits and pieces, but the whole thing, no, 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 you, you don't have our permission to do that. You don't have our permission to recreate a program that we created and then charge people more. Okay, that that is called plagiarism, people. You're not allowed to do that here. Now, let me, let me see if I can explain it. I tell people all the time, anyone who's ever done me wrong, I've always been made aware of them suffering a consequence for their actions. Every single time. I don't have to contact the person and say, hey, you suffered that consequence yet? I don't have to do that. Normally, they contact me. Because they end up being in a situation that they can't get out of, and they know that they have to make amends. And many of them do. Many of them do apologize in their own way when they contact us again. I just had a, a young man who threatened to sue us after we did nothing but try to help. Well, he just informed me that his father passed away. Now, nothing has changed. I told him I still wasn't going to help him with anything. But I was very sad to see his father pass away because I had come to know his father. His father and I had spoken on many occasions. He mentioned to me the physical and medical circumstances surrounding his father's demise, and I didn't know. In speaking with his father, you never would have known that he was in this condition. 
And I appreciate the fact that I did not know everything that was going on. Now, his father's passing away is not the consequence of his actions. It's all the other things that's been going on in this person's life. He's the very same one that I told you all about. That I was trying to help, told him what he needed to say to the court. He got released. And then, right after he got released, based on the information that I told him, and told him what he needed to say to get rid of a charge, which could have gotten him as much as three years extra in jail, he talks about suing us. And all I can say is, Lord, have mercy. I couldn't understand it. We're not even going to tell you about the, the people who have tried to do the organization wrong and the plights they've ended up in. Now, look. They can be mad at me all they want for me explaining this because I don't care because if they had not done what they did there would have been no consequence you guys have all heard of the theory of relativity and uh, blah 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 well look ladies and gentlemen an object traveling at a certain speed will continue to travel at that speed until it meets another object of equal or greater force well ladies and gentlemen the object that we all have to deal with is the consequences of our actions which is greater than the sum of our parts we don't get to control the force of consequence I watched the TV series and it was called Daybreak and it was starring uh, I believe it was Tay Diggs and in Daybreak one of the main phrases was decisions consequence and the guy just kept saying, decisions, consequence. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody knows you reap what you sow. That's what decisions and consequence means. You make a decision, you have to think about what are the different things that could likely happen if I do this or if I do that. Well, most people don't think about those things. They just do. But still, even if you don't think about it, you know there has to be a consequence. There has to be a consequence. Just like the fact that I said this is the year of the lawsuit, I know they're going to come after me. they got no choice but to come after me. But here's the thing. That's why I'm talking to you all right now. That's why I'm about to continue to give you the information I'm giving you. Because if they're going to come my way, then they're going to have to deal with all of you at the same time doing what you legally and lawfully have the right to do. So shall we talk? <sighs> I'm going to switch to a different song by Luther because he's going to play Superstar again. See right there? And I don't want to play Superstar right now. So we're going to skip. You know, I come from a land down under. You know what? I'm going to play this right here. This is Step Into My Life by Melba Moore. And I know y'all don't know much about Melba, but this woman, she went from Fallen, because she sang a song called Fallen, this woman can sing Melba Moore. Go ahead and look up her on YouTube and take a look at some of the songs Melba Moore did, and I'm certain you guys will understand. So we're going to let Melba play in my background, and we're going to get the talk. Ladies and gentlemen, as I kick my feet up, and I hope that this particular computer will allow me to be solely on the headset, because the other computer would do the headset and the microphone on the computer. It would not split the two. But this one says it's on the headset, and I got the mic. Okay? All right. So let, let's talk for a minute. And I want all of you to, to understand the scenario. I have a situation. I did some work for someone and they didn't pay me. Or I had an agreement with someone and they didn't pay me. Or I was forced to go to court with a judge who is not a judge but who works for a private corporation. And this private corporation working judge kept ordering me back to court where I had to take off work and didn't compensate me for showing up at their arena 
saying I was obligated to be there when they had no jurisdiction in the first place. Or, well, the reason why they have no jurisdiction is because the judge works for a private corporation. Private corporations have no sovereign authority in the United States, so a private corporation can't order you to do anything. A private officer can't order you to do anything. If you don't believe me, every judge is required to take an oath of office. Every judge is required to take an oath of office. Their oath of office says they must uphold the Constitution. The Constitution does not delegate any power of sovereignty to a private corporation. And they cannot then, by Congress or anyone else, delegate such power to a non-sovereign entity, one of the three branches of government. Now, just because they're part of the executive branch doesn't mean they have sovereign authority. The only part of the executive branch that has sovereign authority is the president himself, no one else. What about the attorney general? The attorney general does not have sovereign authority. The attorney general cannot act on its own under any circumstance. As a matter of fact, none of the branches of government can operate on their own. They cannot act on their own. They cannot operate on their own. But back to this scenario. Or I was brought in to a courtroom where they put me through a trial, and this actually happened to me, where they had no evidence. And I chose, instead of arguing with them, I chose to remain silent. Because if they have no evidence, why am I going to sit up there and argue their point? It cost me 22 months of my life, but I came off victorious. Why? Because the appeals court saw that there was no evidence. Now, they tried to make it look like it was something else. But you show me anybody who went to court and literally didn't say a word the entire trial and wins on appeal without saying anything. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, somebody's got to compensate me for that time. But the system is rigged. You cannot get due process. It's already been proven. So if I can't get due process, then what can I do? Well, there in our system, there is IRS Tax Topic 453. If you have never read it, go read it. It's only a page long. IRS Tax Topic 453. Because the all caps name, we've already done the video showing you that the all caps name is not a natural person. The all caps name refers to what's known as a legal person. That's why they ask you, pay attention, what is your legal name? That's a legal person or a juristic person. That is a persona ficto. It's a fictional individual that was created. You don't have a legal name. You tell them straight up, my given name is Bob, Tom, Michael, Billy, Bob, Susan, Jane, Joe, doesn't matter. My given name is, but I don't have a legal name. Now, I have a corporation, and it has a name, but the corporation and I are not the same. And I am the CEO of that corporation. It's also associated with a trust. But we're not here about that because you did not say you were here to speak with me because there is a service of process that you must follow. So if you want to speak to that corporation, then you have to follow the service of process because we do not take solicitation. You must go through the registered agent. And that's why you do a notice of change of address, ladies and gentlemen, for service of process of that entity to either your state treasurer, secretary of state, or the United States treasurer, United States secretary of state. Send them that junk. You don't have to accept responsibility for that legal person, that legal fiction, that legal name. What's your legal name? You guys don't understand what they're saying when they ask you that question? All right, back to IRS Tax Topic 453. IRS Tax Topic 453, ladies and gentlemen, simply says that if somebody owes me money, we had an agreement, they didn't pay, and if I was expecting payment or compensation, that I simply can notify them, hey, where's my money? I don't have to wait for a response. So long as they don't pay, then I have a debt with that person. They're indebted to me. Well, the law that comes from what's known as the Mosaic Law from the Torah permits me to forgive the person of the debt. Also, there is another law instituted by the person known as Jesus Christ who said that we must forgive our neighbors if we ourselves want to be forgiven so we're under the law of love to forgive our neighbors 
So that's how you're going to operate. You're simply going to forgive your neighbor of the monetary portion of the debt. Pay attention. Only the monetary portion of the debt. That still gives you the room to sue them for other damages. But the monetary portion of what's owed you, you can forgive. That's what IR, because IRS tax topic 453 only deals with money. Doesn't deal with other damages. Pay attention. So IRS tax topic 453, under that legal title, that legal name, that legal person, you're going to forgive the debt. Now, pay attention. 1099C. There's a video underneath this channel called 1099C. Okay? It's 5 minutes 16 seconds showing you how to put together a 1099C. Forgiving debt. That simple. Alright, now after you've forgiven the debt, you notified them, hey, you owe me money. You don't have to say nothing else. I expect you to pay. You got 3 days, 3 calendar days, and that's it. You don't have to give them 30. You don't have to give them 100. Give them their three calendar days. Have a coconut smile. You know, I come from a land down under. Um, ladies and gentlemen, after you do the 1099, then you go and you grab your 1040 and your Schedule C for the 1040. And you do your taxes at the end of this year the same way you'd normally do it. Or you can do it quarterly. You can do it biannually. And you can do it annually. But you file your taxes incorporating the correct information. Now remember, if you do it biannually, quarterly, or semi-annually, which is biannually, ladies and gentlemen, you will have to incorporate the appropriate information of the previous filing. So just keep that in mind. You can't just do it because you feel like it. Oh, by the way, on this, you don't get greedy. Put what's what. You don't need to put anything exaggerated. You don't need to lie. Okay, there is no reason for any of you to be lying on any of these documents. So if you feel the need to lie, then this ain't for you because you're going to end up in somebody's jail because perjury is still a crime. Okay? <sighs> Lord have mercy. Because you're, it's administrative, ladies and gentlemen. You're doing this administratively. The IRS is an administrative agency. The laws are administrative. The laws are not laws. They are administrative policies and procedures. They are not laws. They are administrative policies and procedures. You need to understand that before you get into this because many of you guys are out there speaking out the side of your neck, talking about what you think the law is. Many of you are wrong. I've been listening to you for years and you don't know the law because you've never studied the law. What you studied was some little small little section and you misunderstood that just like all of you from the time I heard about HR 192, you guys have heard me say, wait a minute, a house joint resolution is not a law? A house joint resolution, that's only part of the Congress. You need to have both the Senate and the House come together. That's why the official law is called joint resolution. Lord have mercy. But nobody would listen, and they kept putting house joint resolution. Go back, 2012, y'all saw me doing videos talking about taking that HR 192, removing the HR 192, and telling you, just used the June 5th and 6th Act of March 9, 1933. I mean, of March 9th. June 5th and 6th Act of 1933. Been saying it since 2012. And nobody listened. So the court said you all were crazy. They said you all were foolish. They said you all didn't know what you were talking about. Why? Because you're quoting the wrong law. And that's why they were treating you the way they were treating you. Treating you as if you were sovereign citizens because you kept bringing up HJR 192. You kept saying and quoting something as law that wasn't law. Yes, that's their technicality. So that's okay. No, 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 no. For a debt, you can go back as far as you want. Just keep carrying it forward every year. So if somebody did something to you back in 1993 or in 1984, well, that's fine. You just send them a notice, hey, man, I'm going to forgive you of what you did. That's right. I expected you should have paid me by now, but you didn't. So I'm going to forgive you of the monetary portion of the debt you owe me. All right, peace out. Now, look, I'm going to be doing a, a, a tax filing, so you may be liable for the taxes on it. But I'm still forgiving you, so the monetary portion, all right, homie? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, is this Angela? Sorry, I, I know that I know I should know the name because I know the song. This is Mickey. See, I was gonna say Angela Wynn, but but 
Mickey Howard. I saw the name earlier, but I wasn't sure. Okay. There you go. She's under new management, y'all. She's found love under new management. Well, anyway, after you do your 1099, you go to your IRS forms. Many of you want to fill out every line. You're misunderstanding the IRS paperwork, and they know you're going to misunderstand that because you were taught in school to check every box. The IRS paperwork doesn't work that way. You don't put nothing in the areas where it doesn't apply. If it doesn't apply, you leave that box alone. If it's just the tax credits you're documenting, or if it's your net operating losses, then document your net operating losses. Ladies and gentlemen, your income, you're going to put your total income on the document. Why? Because if your credits, your write-offs, the taxes you're writing off exceeds the amount of income that credit carries forward, carries over. Now, mind you, ladies and gentlemen, there is this issue of monetizing your credits. How do you convert it to money? Well, remember, there has to be a conversion. So what if, what if they do? They have these vans, these cargo vans. But people didn't just want to be just in a cargo van because they were traveling on the highway. They needed a place where they could lay down so that they didn't have to stay in a hotel. They could stop at a rest station and lay down and take a break. So they started taking these cargo vans and converting them to more seating quarters. And they called them conversion. Well, now you have to convert the tax credits into something that could be utilized as finances, as money. Would you like to know how to do that? Well, there is a way that I'm going to suggest, and this involves a K-1 form. Take your sole proprietorship, because you have an agreement with the bank, make the bank a subcontractor. And on the K-1 form, assign the credits to that subcontractor. And file the taxes. Get their EIN number. Ta-da! There you go. You've just paid off a debt. Now, some of you are not even... I, I've never told anybody this before. But if you do the math, you'll see it fits perfect. Why? Because you do have a contract with the bank. You guys are partners in an endeavor because you've given them permission to trade your home on the market. So offset your debt with a K-1. I will assure you, when we start our new program, that will be one of the features we'll be offered. All right, told you, under new management. Something very special came into my life. No one can take my place. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is one way. The other way is to take your trust. If you don't have a trust, Go to the SATCOM website, SATCOM911.com. Go to the SATCOMM911.com website. Click on the black button. The black button. The black button. It's a black button. Big, huge black button. Start your own. Okay? And learn about trust and create your own trust. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to do a trust. It's just the protection the trust offers. That's what it takes a rocket scientist to understand. Because not everybody knows how to do a trust. Okay? Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Not everybody knows how to do a trust. There are a lot of people out there who talk about knowing how to do a trust. But they don't know. Because they, they, for lack of a better word, stupid. Yeah, Y'all heard me. Most people think they know how to do a trust and they're out there putting together stuff and they don't realize that most of the language they're putting in the trust is canceling the whole thing out. Especially if they're using things like HDR 192 and Uniform Commercial Code, Article 1, Section, uh, 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 what is it, 3, Section 108 or whatever it is. You guys don't have to use any of those codes. Why are you using codes in the first place? Codes apply to the administration, administrative agents, administrative agencies. Those are their codes. They have to follow the code, people. The code was not written for you. It was written for the administrative agencies. Congress does not have the authority to write a code. Congress can only write laws. Codes are not laws, people. Congress shall make no law. Okay, they only have the authority to make law, and that's a presumption. But they don't have the authority to make codes. They have a right to regulate commerce. 
so they can write regulations concerning commerce amongst the nation, amongst the several states, but they do not get to regulate your commercial activity. That's why I just did the last video showing you guys about how your promissory notes are legal tender. There are no regulations for that, ladies and gentlemen. The Treasury can only write a regulation showing how to proceed with that because you're operating as a banking institution. But as a private individual, they cannot regulate your commerce. They cannot. They do not have the authority to regulate private commerce amongst individuals. They cannot do that. They don't keep and re retain possession of property after you purchase it. Purchase is the absolute right to property. If you purchase something, I don't care if you purchase it with a couple of toenails. It's your property. Once you have purchased it and the purchase has been accepted, that's your property. Congress does not retain ownership. So no, if you buy a gun, and y'all know how much I hate guns, if you buy a gun in Arizona and you do so lawfully by making a purchase, getting a receipt, once you take that gun from Arizona to Texas, there is no one who can tell you you did something wrong because that is property. Congress doesn't have the authority to regulate it once it has been secured privately. Many of you don't know the law, so you won't be able to argue this. You'll think you know the law, but you won't be able to argue it. I'm just stating what the facts are. I'm not giving you the argument. Okay? Now, let's get back to special purpose vehicles. What is a special purpose vehicle? Well, it's exactly that. It's a conversion, a vehicle that's created for a special purpose. So, as I told you, before they had cargo vans, and that's all they had. Or they had vans with the many rolls of seats. But they didn't have a van where somebody could just go in the back and lay down when they were tired. Or where they could go and open up a cabinet like a limousine and get some wine and drink while on the highway, which is illegal now, but wasn't illegal then. You understand? Ladies and gentlemen, they didn't have that back then, so they created it by what's called a conversion. So they created a special vehicle. So you have to do the same. If you want to take the tax credits from the 1099 form and monetize it, convert it to a different form of coin or currency of the United States, you have to take it and you have to put it into something else. Because right now, it's only in the 1099 form. You have to take it off the 1099 form. Well, I took it off the 1099 form and I put it on the 1040. Yeah, it's good. We'll see. That's right. But you did. That's not monetizing it. That's only making sure that they give you the credits. And they document. You have to take those credits and you have to do what's known as a conversion by putting it into a vehicle for transport because they can't go from the 1099 or the 1040 anyplace else. So how do you transport it? Well, you do what's known as a notice of assignment, a bill of lading. That's what your notice of assignment is. You do a notice of assignment of the credits to the trust because you can assign it to a partner or a business related entity and it can be transferred once well since your trust is your sole proprietorship pay attention your trust is your sole proprietorship that all caps name that's your sole proprietorship so that transfer to that is not your first transfer that transfer is automatic because it's a partner so you can transfer it to that without suffering the penalty of the one transfer of the tax credits at a time so now, guess what do you do? After you transfer it to the all-caps name, well, technically it's already in the all-caps name because it's coming from, but you're the one doing it as the trustee of that entity. So now you take it, do a notice of assignment to your trust, the trust you've created, and you document it as property of the trust. After you document it as property of the trust, you go back and watch the video. Some people have already done this that I did on bonds. You create a bond. Now, again, I need you guys to understand that video on bonds is not complete. 
I purposely did not add a couple of things because I said you guys need to do your own research and homework. And one of the things that's not added in there is a maturity date. But I purposely did that. I told you guys this is an example. This is not complete. I said that. Some people watched the video. They got a lot from it. But here's the thing. I want you all to understand something. There are a couple of things missing on purpose from that video because you have to do your own research. This is not a hand-me-out. Nobody, nobody's giving you all the pieces of the puzzle. Nobody's giving you all the pieces of the puzzle. Nah, I don't want to. I don't want to do that song because I know that song right there. See that? That's Mini Rippleton. I love me some Mini. Okay. Uh uh. We're not doing that. Uh. Let's see. No, we're not doing Monica either. Let's do. Uh, Can you stand the rain? This is new edition. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain this. There's a, a couple, and they scheduled a consult with me, and we were talking about just this subject here. They were explaining their situation in their dire straits, and I literally told them I don't care about that. I don't care about your dire straits. Your dire straits are no different than anybody else's dire straits. However, I can only tell you, and this is what I told them, what you can do, but you're going to have to do the research because I'm not going to tell you everything. That's not what a consult is for. We had that conversation. I spoke with them at length. We, I gave them the information of what they needed to research, what they needed to study. Less than a year later, they came back to me. They showed me their tax credits with the IRS. Okay? Several hundred million dollars that the IRS recorded. And then after they presented that to me, this is the second person that showed me. Well, no, actually the third person, but the other person didn't show me the transcripts. But it's the third person that has actually gotten back with me and showed me that they followed through. And so they did their taxes, ladies and gentlemen. And after they did it, they created the special purpose vehicle that was referred to. And they put the credits in there. They proceeded to go to the bank. And they are literally, at this very moment, working out an agreement with the bank. The bank has had certain questions, and I've helped them answer those questions. And the last thing from the bank is, oh, no, there is no problem. It's just your instrument, and they spoke about the special purpose vehicle, the bond, does not have... Because a bond is a special purpose vehicle from the trust. But the bond did not have a maturity date. See, I did not help them with the bond. I only did the video, and they told me they followed the instructions on the video, and I told them yes, but it didn't include everything. And so they said it didn't have a maturity date, and we're trying to figure out how to work around that. That's what the bank told them. They're trying to get a 27 to $45 million loan. Okay. Is this ambitious for them? No. Because there is a business plan that's at work here. And they put it together and they presented that to the bank and the bank understands their business plan. The bank is willing to work with them. They've even spoken with an attorney who has confirmed everything that they're doing. Look. It is not my job to walk you guys through all of this. I've never volunteered for that. I am pissed off that nobody else is talking about this, that nobody else is helping anybody with this stuff. I put this information out there not so that the people who are in the know can explain all of this to people. No, that's not why I put this information out, ladies and gentlemen. I put this information out so that you all will know that I'm not just speaking out the side of my neck. I do not study this stuff. Go ahead, pay attention. These videos are not about my study. This video is about my understanding of what people can do, of understanding what the law says. So, what is your understanding? Well, your understanding is just this. Document your tax credits. Get it done now before they change the monetary system, because if you do it later, they will change the law, which means you will not be grandfathered in. Now, see, some of you can technically be grandfathered in, under the fact that the tax credits accumulated and happened prior to the change. However, 
why take that chance? Why not get it done now so it's already documented? So that when there is a change, okay? Let me let me see if I can explain it to you guys this way. One, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, what I can tell you for a certain is I have over six trillion dollars in tax credits. As I said in the last video, the arbitration awards, you don't have to worry about what no stupid court say, and I don't give up what they say. I don't care what a stupid judge has to say about the arbitration and the arbitration awards. They don't control the arbitration and the arbitration awards. As long as you have proof that you notified the other party and they failed to respond, and you did have a prior relationship and agreement with them, and the arbitration agreement had a prior notification, meaning that there was a prior agreement, and you did a notice of change in terms of agreement and had an expiration date, it had a commerce clause, meaning it involved money, and that it was between competent parties, which the prior agreement documents it was between competent parties, then that solidifies the fact that it was a valid agreement under the law. The courts don't get to determine whether or not the agreement is valid or not. The Supreme Court in Archer versus Henry, I mean, what is it? Henry Schein versus Archer and White Sales. Okay, Henry Schein versus Archer and White Sales, 19 or 2019, made it clear that only the arbitrator, if the parties select that only the arbitrator is the only one who can make a determination, that only the arbitrator has that right, and the court cannot sit up there and assume responsibilities that were delegated by the parties to the arbitrator. That was, uh, what was his name? Uh, the new judge at the time, the the one who everybody was against, and it was the first decision he participated in. Now I can't Kavanaugh, okay? He's the one who delivered that opinion. So read the opinion of the court. How when the arbitrator makes a decision, it doesn't matter what the court thinks. Now the court doesn't appreciate that because they want to be in charge and control, and they want to be still in love with something. Well, they can be in love anyway. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your arbitration awards. Go ahead and document your tax credits if you haven't already done so. Go ahead and create your trust. Many of you have sat packs. The special purpose vehicle has already been created for you. Many of you have 98 series number. All, everything's already been done. All you need to do is understand that this is a process. It's just you were supposed to be doing this research on your own, and you didn't do the research on your own, and we're stuck. Because you're expecting us as an organization, you couldn't pay us to do this for you because you couldn't afford it. Other people are doing this for people. Guess what? They're not doing everything that we're doing. They're only doing the tail end, taking the tax credits and monetizing it. But they're charging you thirty, forty, sixty thousand dollars to do that. Recognize the value of what you got, people. Recognize the value of what you have, people. Those of you who are part of the new program, and if you're not part of the new program and you're not part of the SAP packs, you need to understand that the new program does exactly what the SAP packs did. Pay attention. The new program, the Fourth Amendment program, does exactly what the SAP packs did. The only thing is the program does not include the tax documents. That won't be until November, December that we're going to start doing that for people. If you want to have the benefits of the SAP packs, not all of the benefits, because the benefits of the SAP packs were specific to that group. If you want to have the benefits of the SAP pack, the trust and so forth, give me a second. I don't know who this is. I I don't know this band, so I gotta I gotta be cautious because I don't know. Because sometimes I don't know the band, y'all. Sometimes they curse and stuff, and I can't have that. So we're gonna do OJ's. Okay, and right now they're gonna cry together. All right, let's get back to this conversation, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't have a sad pack, if you don't have a trust, then the best trust in the world, in my opinion, is the micro trust. Why? Because the micro trust allows you to keep control of your property, it's independent of the main trust, it's independent of all the other trusts associated with the main trust. Pay attention. It's independent of the main trust. It's independent of all the property associated with the main trust. 
Your trust is only associated with the main trust as a delegation of authority. Because you are the trustee and the beneficiary, you control your property. Remember, a minor remains a minor until they gain control of the securities held in their minor account. Well, what's the best way to gain control of the securities held in your minor account? Should you not become the trustee and the beneficiary of those securities? Well, that's what the micro trust does. Ta-da! All right. So if you don't already have a SAT pack, SAT packs did the same thing. If you don't already have a SAT pack, this is what you need to pay attention to. Look, I have people who are upset with me because I would not help them dig themselves out of holes because they thought because they spoke with me that they were having conversation with me that I was supposed to tell them this stuff. Mother, nobody gets to use me. No one. I am not here as your repository for information. You don't get to try to befriend me and try to siphon information out of me. I'm so sick and tired of people. I understand why they want to do depopulation. Because some of you, never mind, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of information out there. You guys could be out there doing a bunch of things. You could be doing research on all kind of other things, and many of you are. Many of you are being told, hey, don't turn your cell phones on on October 4th because they're getting ready to send a signal through the universe and that signal is going to come back and slap everybody right smack upside their head and tell them you're dead, you're a zombie. Excuse me? Excuse me. I heard so much of this over the years, even the part where Trump said that they were going to arrest him. Could it be that this one isn't a false flag? So this is what I'm going to tell you. all If it were me, Honestly, I'd err on the side of caution. I, I don't have no vaccine inside of me. Why? Because, let me just say, I didn't, I had the virus three times. Three times. There was no reason for me to get the vaccine because I didn't need to be protected against it. I had built up, what do they say, immunity. That's what, that's what they were telling that I, you know, once I had it so many times, I'd build up the antibodies. So I built up me some anima bodies. So I didn't need to get the jab, jibbity, jab, 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 like so many other people do. Okay. However, because there is information out there that there is a possibility that something might go wrong on October 4th, then the possibility is err on the side of caution. It's not going to hurt you to turn your phone off for a couple hours. It really won't hurt you. I mean, you got so many other things. Everybody needs to, uh, what do they call that set? Decouple themselves from the Internet and from electronics. So why not let that be one day where you do it for a couple hours? Where you tell everybody, hey, I'm going to be out of pocket for a couple hours. So y'all stay up, all right? But remember, I have a 5G satellite system. They say it's supposed to go through the 5G and the 4G. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a 5G satellite system. Okay, do I just shut that off too? I might. You know what? As a matter of fact, and then we, and then we, and then we made love. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry. Uh, Eddie Levert, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, all I can tell you is this. Why not err on the side of caution? Whether you believe it or not, why not err on the side of caution? And if it doesn't happen, then you may get to sit up here and talk about the idiots and make them look like idiots. But if it does happen, then you get to say, oh, no, 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 I, I wasn't going to take no chances. No, I, 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 no, even though I didn't believe it at first, I still sat up there and did it because, you know, what, what, was I, what did I have to lose? And it turns out they were right. So what do you have to lose? I look at our society. I look at all the news. You saw the video I just did, ladies and gentlemen, talking about that object that was in the sky that they claim was above in South Africa, only to see that it was a fake. The person who did the video, I guess they didn't even pay attention. I thought they, you know, they probably just did it so quickly that they didn't even notice all of the, the so-called, um, what do you call it, inconsistencies with their own junk that they were trying to perpetrate out there. So don't just believe everything you see in here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is 
girl since I met you. I've been. He he feels so alive, y'all. He's in paradise. This is the OJ's, ladies and gentlemen, and you know this is the same beat almost with pop 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 goes my mind. They they loves, ladies and gentlemen, you. We're going to go on out of here with the OJs and loving you, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say thank you all for taking the time to listen. I do hope that this information proved to be beneficial. Okay. And I hope that you were able to gather something and gain something from it. If you did gain something and gather something from it, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. You know I don't play that junk. You'll never hear me saying hit no like and subscribe. I guarantee you with all my heart I could care less. If you hit like and subscribe, oh man, sorry, I don't care if people like what I, the information I put out, it's information. So when you put out the truth, your opinion of the truth doesn't matter. That's, sorry, this is my soul. Ah, it's to my soul. So alive. I want to shout. I want to scream about it. I want to tell the whole world about it. Sorry. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. So good to me. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's let you guys go. Hey, I got my music back. So y'all just going to have to live with that now because it's been a long time. But I decided to download and install Media Monkey because Media Monkey I had before. Now, see, the reason why, because, see, I don't play music when I, this is Genesis, and this is Exodus, and this is Leviticus, and Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 2nd Sam, 1st, 2nd King, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, and Joshua, Judges, Ruth, you know, see, uh, right here, okay, that's all right here, so we're not going to play that in the middle of the video, that's why I have to go through and make sure what's coming next, because I don't mix this with this, you know what I mean, all right, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you. That's the old Jays, and they're taking us on out of here. We're going to let y'all get on with y'all day. Thank y'all for joining us, and I do hope that we don't have no problem. Let me go ahead and bring this back up. Well, we're going to stop it right here, so y'all have a good day, all right?